Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the acid and metal reaction. Uh, we'll first look at the reaction and a general equation. We'll then look, have a look at an example equation. We'll work through a couple of examples together and then I'll explain how we can test for hydrogen. So this reaction is an exothermic reaction. So this means that heat is given off as this reaction occurs. And what happens in the reaction is the hydrogen ions from the acid bond with each other uh, to form a hydrogen diatomic, so two atoms of hydrogen gas, so that's H2. Uh, and the anion that's left over binds with the metal to form a salt or an ionic compound. Uh, so an example of this reaction is when magnesium reacts with sulfuric acid. Uh, so we get that hydrogen formed, as well as we get a salt, which in this case is magnesium sulfate. So that magnesium is from the magnesium metal, and the sulfate is the anion in sulfuric acid. Uh, so we'll now look at a couple of examples. Now this one is zinc and hydrochloric acid. So the first thing we need to do is recognize that this is an acid metal reaction and we've got a metal being zinc and an acid being hydrochloric acid. So that's the reaction. We then need to recall the general equation uh, for this reaction, which is acid and metal reacts to form salt and hydrogen. Uh, so we know we're going to have hydrogen that's given to us. So we can put that in straight away. Now we need to work out what that salt is going to be. And this is the point where I find it's useful to write out the chemical formula and uh, work it out from there. So we'll put our hydrogen in, our diatomic hydrogen gas, um, and we'll put in zinc. Okay, so zinc is Zn, and hydrochloric acid from our uh, acid table is HCl. So what's happening here is this hydrogen is going to here and a salt is going to be formed by what's left over. So we have our zinc here and our chlorine. Uh, so that's going to form our salt here. So we've got zinc chloride. Uh, now we can look at our periodic table and find that the zinc uh, has a valency of two plus, chlorine has a valency of negative one. Uh, so we're going to need two chlorine atoms here uh, for that to be balanced within the ions. Uh, and then all we need to do is balance this equation. So on this side, start with our metals. We have one zinc, one zinc. That's good to go. Let's have a look at our ions, no ions. Uh, so we'll move on to non-metals and we've got chlorine here, one chlorine here and two chlorine here. So that's going to be a problem. So what we'll do is we'll put a two at the front here, giving us two hydrochloric acid molecules. Um, so now we've got two chlorines, so that's balanced. And that also gives us two hydrogens, uh, so that's balanced there. Uh, so that equation's now balanced and we can write our salt in uh, to our word equation. Zinc chloride. Uh, so that's the end of that one. So let's have a look at another example. Here we have iron and phosphoric acid. So again, we recognize that this is a metal reacting with an acid. Uh, so we recall our general equation, which is metal and acid react to form salt and hydrogen. Uh, so we can put our hydrogen in straight away. Uh, now we'll now look at the formula. So H2 for hydrogen, uh, iron is Fe. Uh, phosphoric acid, we look at our uh, acid table and find that phosphoric acid is H3PO4. Uh, now we need to work out what this salt is going to be. So once again, this hydrogen on this side is going to react to form this hydrogen on this side. Uh, and we need to then have a look at what's left to form the salt. So on the reactant side, we've got iron and phosphate. So therefore our product is going to be iron phosphate. So that'll be FEPO4. Uh, so the valency of PO4 is three minus. 
Um, I'll assume that this is going to be iron 3 phosphate. Uh, so that's actually balanced there. So lastly, we want to balance our equation. Uh, so starting with the metal, we've got iron here, iron here. That's all good. Uh, we've got a phosphate here in our ions, phosphate here. That's all good. Uh, there's no non-metals. There's no oxygen. We'll move on to hydrogen. Uh, so we've got three hydrogen on this side and two hydrogen on this side. Now, that's going to be a bit of a problem because... Uh, we need to get another hydrogen on this side. Now, when we've got a two and a three like this, um, and this has to come in, the hydrogen over here has to come in uh, twos because it's diatomic hydrogen. The best thing to do is just to times everything by two. Uh, so we're not dealing with one and a half things. So that's two iron, two phosphoric acids, two iron phosphates, so now, instead of having one and a half uh, hydrogen molecules, we've got uh, six atoms on this side, which will be able to form three molecules of hydrogen on this side. Uh, and our equation is now balanced. Uh, so we'll be able to write up uh, in here that our salt is that iron 3 phosphate. And that's that equation done. Okay, so that hydrogen that's produced during this reaction can be tested for using what's called the pop test. To do the pop test, we take a lit match and place it over the mouth of the test tube or whatever the uh, container is that you have it in. Uh, now, you may want to, depending on how much uh, hydrogen is being produced, you may want to put a stopper or your finger, providing you're wearing a glove, over top of the uh, test tube to trap a bit more of that hydrogen so you get a bit better concentration of hydrogen in the air. Uh, and then once you place that lit match, uh, it will make a very distinctive popping sound. And if it pops, that tells you that there is hydrogen. In this video, we've looked at the general reaction between an acid and a metal and found that acid and metal reacts to form a salt and hydrogen, remembering that salt can be any ionic compound. We've had a look at a couple of example equations and worked through some examples together, remembering that the salt comes from the metal and the anion of the acid. And we also described the pop test as a way to test for hydrogen gas. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.